Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton action and beyond. This week we're in Malaysia to catch up with one of the country's legendary shuttlers as he lends his personal touch to the next generation of players. And we're in Korea to find out how the country's association is working hard to establish their badminton dominance. If you drive a little more than an hour away from Malaysia's capital Kuala Lumpur, you'll find a typical Saturday afternoon scene on the badminton courts at Klang Chinese Girls' School. Whilst the young trainees are going through their routine warm-up, a well-known figure is the centre of attention – former Malaysia men's doubles Yap Kim Hock. Together with his on-court partner, Chia Soon Kit, they were synonymous with the excellence of the Malaysia badminton scene in the 1990s. Whilst he may have left the playing court to the next generation, his love and passion for the sport meant he did not leave badminton entirely. Actually, now I've been doing a private, private coaching. So, so most of them are students. They are students. They are very young students, and they are some are beginners. So, I go, I go to school. I go to school. I go to promote uh, this badminton. I feel that uh, they need uh, some, uh, you know, experienced coaches experience uh, good management to, to, to have, uh, have uh, trainings with, with uh, all the school boys. So the basics of the trainings is very important for beginners, for beginners and uh, for the young, young like age, like seven years old or eight years old. So they need uh, good, good uh, knowledge about this uh, uh, skill, badminton. Like many Malaysian families, badminton is part and parcel of the Yap household. Encouraged by his father, who was a district player, Kim Hock took up the sport when he was eight years old. Uh, all my family are playing, uh, especially my brothers, they are state players, and uh, I start uh, sparring with them, uh, and I'm the youngest in the family. So I start with the school, school team, and then I represent school for the district tournament, then I win uh, under 15 uh, 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 champion. Uh, during my age of 14. Kim Hock's father knew his son's talent would be unrealized if he stayed in their hometown in Mua, Johor. So, when he was 17, his father took him to Kuala Lumpur, where there were more opportunities to hone his skills. The move paid off. In 1989, Kim Hock, then 19, was drafted into the national squad, but it wasn't in the category that he would excel in. Yeah, I started uh, main singers. I started main singer during uh, age uh, under 18, uh, in uh, uh, district level and state level and national level. So I joined uh, during um, uh, KL, KL, uh, KL teams. Uh, I'm I'm a playing I'm playing singer. Then uh, I joined doubles after 1991. So I, at that time, I have already in uh, BAM, that's called uh, Badminton Asian Malaysia. So I'm in the uh, elite group, uh, backup groups on, on 1989. Kim Hock's partnership with the more experienced Chia Soon Kit began in 1995. Soon Kit, who was two years older and had won the 1992 Thomas Cup, had been collecting medals since the late 80s. Their on-court chemistry took off almost immediately. In just their second tournament, the pair picked up their first title in the Asian Badminton Championships. Known to be ruthless at the net, Kim Hock would set up shots for Soon Kit to finish. They became Malaysia's most successful men's doubles in the mid-90s. They were the nation's first Olympic silver medalists. In the 1996 Atlanta Games, narrowly missing out on gold. Their five-year partnership might have been short, but it lives long in the memory. We, we started to look uh, 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 the hope for the, our nation because at the time we, they don't know who is Yakim Hock because yeah so we we proof we proof and then uh, uh, we improve a lot and, and, and getting better on 96 in 96 we 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 are the second seat we are sec, second world in the world in the world ranking. Kim Hock's 11-year career came to an end in 2000. A nagging shoulder injury meant he had to call time on his career in his 20s. I feel that uh, I cannot deliver. So I retire on uh, my age, uh, 30 years old, uh, 20, sorry, 20, 29 years old. So I feel uh, I cannot deliver. 
but uh, go to the coaching side. But uh, uh, for me, I think I love badminton, so I continue oh, with, with badminton. In 2001, he took up a coaching contract with the Badminton Association of Malaysia, first with the national team and then with the junior setup. During this time, he successfully produced three world junior champions in three consecutive years. When his contract ended in 2012, he set out on his own, establishing the Yap Kim Hock Badminton Academy. He currently has three coaches, but he's not content to just oversee things. He's very hands-on and is often seen on the court showing the young hopefuls the ropes. Tough. Tough to me. He, he's the best coach. Um, I will learn more from him for, for the doubles. You, you, they have must, the heart to become a world champion. You know, then you must believe yourself, what you are doing. You can take uh, all the opinions, but you can see uh, all the players' good points. You can see all the coaches' uh, program, but you must have that uh, uh, belief on yourself. Yeah, what you're doing, what what you want. As his training session wound down, it didn't take long for the coach himself to pick up his racket and jump right into the thick of action. It's obvious that his love for the game has not diminished. For Yap Kim Hock, nothing beats ending a day with a good game of badminton with friends. Time to test your badminton knowledge. Tell us who this mystery person is. I was born in Indonesia. My father was a former badminton world champion. I won my first Super Series title at the Leaning Singapore Open 2013. I think um, I like tennis, um, I like watching it, but I'm actually really bad at playing it. Um, so yeah, I'd like to believe that I could be a good tennis player. I think I'll be uh, studying at the moment, trying to, uh, to get a good education. I think I might be, might be doing something like journalism or stuff like that. I think I would uh, have become a teacher. I would like to be a teacher when, when my career ends um, to te teach uh, young children. I think Carsten, he would be a bounty hunter. Definitely be a footballer. Um, I played quite a bit of football when I was young and I was quite good at it, but I had to make a decision between badminton and football and the badminton was going really well at the time, so yeah, um, I'd, I'd love to be a, be a footballer. Uh, I think I will work in in sports business uh, in somehow. I don't know uh, what kind, but I think uh, sport related. And I would be um, a sailor. I think. <laughs> When we get back, we're in Korea to report on how the country's association is hoping to enhance the status of the national team. Before the break, we asked you to identify this player. I was born in Indonesia. My father was a former badminton world champion. I won my first Super Series title at the Leaning Singapore Open 2013. The answer is Tommy Sugiarto. Tommy Sugiarto was born in Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. The 25-year-old is the son of former world champion Ichuk Sugiarto. He is currently the number one single shuttler for his country and is ranked third in the BWF rankings in that category. Hi, I'm Jan Jürgensen. This is all of me. Lovely kill from the day. Oh, sheer threat from Jorgensen, who was waiting, ready to pounce. That's very good. Very, very good.
Uh, my first year as a player, I was a little child. Uh, I think I started when I was around four years old. My family has always played, and uh, yeah, like now, uh, it was uh, pure joy to play badminton, and it's still the same thing who drives me today, even though I've played for many years now. Um, it's still the, the joy for badminton and the love of the game, so it's the same from the first hit to now. Great defense from Jorgensen. Goodness, mate. Drop shot from my forehand. I think that's my favorite shot. Oh, super shot. Oh, that's brilliant. Lovely, lovely drop shot from Jan Jorgensen. Uh, I define my game as uh, quite good overall. I have a really tough uh, physical game. I'm really hard to, to run down and um, I think I'm, I'm quite overall. Uh, I'm really fast, of course. Well, that rally absolutely playing into the hands of Jorgensen. He loves to work and work opponents. The highlight of my career is, uh, of course, being uh, part of the Danish Olympic team in 2012 in London. And of course, uh, it's the two tournaments I won in Denmark Open in 2010 and uh, in French Open here in 2013. What a performance from Jan Jorgensen. Once again, Denmark have a champion. We're in Seoul, the capital of South Korea, to investigate a badminton superpower looking to re-establish itself as a dominant force in the world of international badminton. Prior to the emergence of China, South Korea was the towering presence in East Asian badminton. Masterful especially in the doubles category, they collected Olympic gold with ease and were imperious at the All England Championships throughout the late 1980s until the mid-90s. But as their champions aged, so their supremacy waned. Seemingly unable to replace their talent, they took a backseat as other nations grew. It is internationally recognized that Korea's men's doubles is strong. However, women's doubles, mixed doubles and men's solo are lagging behind compared to the past. The Badminton Career Association was founded in 1953, but the popularity of the sport really mushroomed during the 80s. Badminton became a demonstration sport in the 1988 Seoul Olympics. When the sport made its debut in Barcelona 1992, Korea walked away with gold in the men's and women's doubles. They have medaled in at least one category at all Olympic Games since then although the extent of their downgrade as a major power was evident as they collected only a bronze in the 2012 London Games. Korea national team historically has been quite strong in double matches, so lots of gold medals in Olympic Games have been secured. I believe there is no gap between ourselves and the China team when it comes to double matches. However, we are relatively weak in the singles game, so we are working on this with a special training schedule and program. The engine of that training program is based in this building, the Taenong Sports Complex. This enormous structure was originally built in 1964 after the Tokyo Olympics and is now the training center for the national team. For those good enough to make the grade, this will be their second home all year round, catering to their every need. The badminton court mat is covered for practice in Tenung Sports Complex. In addition, there is a running track and weight training facilities in the complex. I believe Tenung Sports Complex is the best. Beyond the impressive facilities, the BKA is focused on the specificity of training, with sports science at the heart of its player development. There are two men single coaches, two women single coaches, two men doubles coaches, and two women double coaches. There are separate technical skill training provided for single and double games. I do dawn training for one hour and morning training for two to two and a half hours. In the afternoon, there is two-hour training 
and during the evening time, individual training or treatment are done as and when necessary. The association has also gone beyond its borders in search of new ideas. Last year, the BKA signed a deal with the Badminton Association of Malaysia, which allows them to exchange players for training. Starting last year, we began joint training partnerships with the Malaysian junior team. This year, the Malaysian team will visit Korea, along with Indonesia, and conduct joint training for eight days. Through these training partnerships, we are able to capture the specific skills of Southeast Asian players, and they are able to identify the training method and styles of the Korean team. With a population of just over 50 million, Korea is relatively small compared to its badminton rivals, so a regimented sports structure through its education system is seen as the best way to develop and encourage new talent. In Korea, basically, there's a sports school system. Schools nationwide have their own teams and develop their own players the best players would eventually go on to play for the company teams. So the Badminton Association provides financial assistance to city and provincial teams. Twenty fourteen is an important year for Korea. They are playing host to the Asian Games. Known as the second largest multi-sports tournament, the BKA is keen to show the world that the country's badminton has much to offer and is still a major player on the international scene. Our most important objective is the performance of the Korean players. We want them to succeed so the Korea's badminton reputation is maintained. Above all, we must win gold medals at the Asian and Olympic Games so that Korea's badminton status in the world can grow. They might have slipped down the pecking order, but Korea continues to punch above its weight and is working hard to trigger yet another golden age in its badminton history. After the break, we catch up with the youthful history maker, Aditya Joshi. India, a land of more than a billion people where cricket is a religion. But we're here to catch up with a young man excelling at a different sport. Aditya Joshi has become the first player in India to be ranked first in the BWF World Junior Rankings. It feels great and uh, I'm very happy because uh, being world number one itself is great and if you be the first Indian then uh, it's really great I'm, I'm, and I'm really happy. Joshi was in the midst of preparing for the recently concluded Grand Prix Gold event held in Lucknow but the 17-year-old was kind enough to find some time to speak with us as he described his latest achievement. Everyone in my family was shocked and each and everyone was really happy because uh, I was the world number one and uh, nobody knew till my friend messaged me. So when we checked it in the internet, everyone was really happy. While it may just be junior rankings, it's still a glowing testament to the rise of Indian players in badminton. Joshi is the latest starlet to build on the success of an exciting new generation. Thailand Open singles champion Kadambi Srikanth World Championship semi-finalist PV Sindhu and Olympics bronze medalist Saina Newal are just some of the names synonymous with India's badminton rise. Key to this has been the vision of the Badminton Association of India to put the country back amongst the world's badminton elite. This positive direction is especially crucial for young players like Joshi to continue their development. Nowadays they are organizing lots of camps. Uh, senior camps, national camps, which is helping players a lot. And they are sending uh, players to perform, participate in lots of senior international tournaments, which compared to uh, earlier days, uh, players, as far as I know, used to get only four or five international tournaments in a year. But now they are playing 12 to 13 international tournaments, so which helps you a lot. 
Development work at the grassroots level has been crucial as well. Joshi feels that Indian players now are reaping in the benefits. Academies like Prakash Padukan Academy and Gopichan Academy, all the academies, the one academy in UP, uh, Uttar Pradesh, coaches there are, everyone is working on physical aspects and uh, players in India now, everyone I think in senior level is fit. Hailing from Dar City in Madhya Pradesh, Aditya Joshi first picked up the racket at the age of five. But how he actually got serious about it came from a fatherly touch. Uh, my dad is a badminton coach in Sports Authority of India. So he used to take me uh, for when he used to go and train other players. So slowly, I, also, I used to watch player training and uh, playing this game. So I got interested in this game and that's how I started. Joshi was soon winning local tournaments in categories above his age. Initially competing in both singles and doubles events, the young shuttler also found success on the international stage in 2011. The 15-year-old Joshi picked up junior medals in Japan and Russia. But going solo was always his true calling as he got into the senior mix at the tail end of 2012, taking part in the India Open International Challenge. That journey was brief, but the experience was telling when Joshi emerged champion in the junior national singles last year. The young ace remains grounded. He realizes the bigger challenges ahead. I think senior, it's really tough, and um, each and every player is really tough as an op opponent. And uh, you really need good endurance, speed, and uh, power to play in senior level. If you perform well in juniors, then everyone expects you to perform well in seniors, which puts you under pressure. But I think uh, you should just believe in yourself, and when you are playing seniors, just play what, uh, your game and be confident. 2013 was also the inauguration for the Indian Badminton League, or IBL, where fans were treated to a range of local and international talent. Exciting times for Indian badminton, especially for aspiring world beaters. You get to play with some of the really good players in India, like in international level, like Lee Chong Wee, world number one. If you get to play with him and if you train with him for a few weeks, that, that really helps you a lot. So events like IBEL should more happen, so the players can also get experience how to play with other senior uh, international players and they'll get to learn also from them. While the young shuttler is adamant he's still a work in progress, Joshi cannot wait to get his season going and kick on from there. Recently I'm looking forward to play the junior ABC and the world juniors. So basically right now I'm focusing in that and after that I'll be looking forward to play all the senior tournaments. Ultimate goal I would uh, like to perform well in Olympics and uh, I will try my best to win a medal there. If gracing the junior world number one spot is anything to go by, Aditya Joshi could be the answer to India's long-awaited return amongst badminton's best. Before we go, let's catch up on what's happening in international badminton in our Badminton Unlimited calendar. Next week on Babington Unlimited, we spend a relaxed afternoon with Thailand's dynamic duo Sudket Prapakamol and Sarali Tongtongkam. And we're in Indonesia to catch up with the nation's golden couple Susi Susanti and Alan Budi Kusuma. Bye for now. <laughs>